Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us for a tour of Autodesk Account as part of our Up and Ready series. My name is Andrew Starkweather and I will be narrating our tour today. During the presentation, please feel free to type in any questions or feedback into the chat window and we will answer what we can during the webinar and follow up with any unanswered inquiries afterwards. We welcome all the feedback and would like to hear your thoughts and questions. Autodesk Account is the one place to access your products, services, and subscription benefits. This will apply to subscriptions, cloud services, maintenance plans, and free services like trials, all of which can be accessed in 14 different languages by signing in at autodesk.com account. Before we dive into exploring the interface, let's go through some of the benefits of the new Autodesk Account. Our goal from the feedback we received was to help design Autodesk Account as a more intuitive, interactive portal to get you where you need to go faster. We've created a more streamlined user interface, making it easier to access products, services, and benefits. Autodesk Account also provides a personalized experience serving content based on roles and benefits. This means that if you're a contract manager, software coordinator, or end user, there will be different tools available for each role and provided automatically so you don't have to guess what options should be available. So while we explore the new account interface, the experience is generally going to be the same for everyone unless we specifically call it out. All these changes lead to more efficient performance and provide a single location for all things Autodesk. The Autodesk account interface is simple to navigate. We are going to start with the navigation panel on the top left of the screen. This panel will give us access to our products, our updates, cloud services, user information, and device management. We will be exploring these in further detail as we continue. Beneath that, quick links give you access to additional content. Right now we're seeing product enhancements, generate network license file, and network license manager but depending on which roles and products you have, the links may be different. And just to clarify, when we talk about roles, we are referring to contract managers or software coordinators, who would be the administrators, and the end users. Now we are going to move over to the middle column where our drawers reside. Anytime you see these arrows, click on them and it will expand that drawer to more information about your product or subscription. Next, each product line will contain action buttons and menus for quickly performing tasks which we will provide examples of as we continue. Finally, the top navigation panel includes access to your management page, which is the destination for downloads, license information, and managing users, and is the page we are reviewing now. The profile page is where you can manage your user information and is divided into four subcategories. Let's take a look at that profile page. First, My Profile allows an administrator or user to add personal information like a short biography, professional information, or an address. A quick note on the address, this would be a personal address, and updating this will not change the overall company or shipping address. To update the shipping address in the system of record, the administrator would have to contact their reseller or Autodesk customer service for any changes. Next, Security Settings is where you can update your email address, user ID, and password, and also activate two-step activation. This is a new service that adds an extra layer of authentication during your login process, also verifying through either voice, SMS, email, or through the Authenticator app. Next, linked accounts, which will let you sync your credentials from other social media accounts, allowing you to use your social media login when accessing Autodesk services. Finally, the Preferences section is where you would choose your language as well as your communication preferences with Autodesk. Now let's take a look at the Products and Services page. This is the main page for most of the vital account functions like downloading, locating serial numbers, requesting previous versions, and more. First, with the introduction of the new licensing model, let's see how you can differentiate your license type within Autodesk account. Under the Products and Services menu, where your software is listed, you will see three new terms. Subscription Multi-User, for recurring licenses with multiple seats on a network server. Subscription Single User, for recurring licenses assigned to a specific user. And Maintenance Plan, for perpetual licenses attached to an annual plan. 
When viewing your management page, you can access your products by clicking the Products and Services tab, represented by the cube icon. If you'd like to filter just your products and not any of the cloud services, click the Products line. This might help you get to your desired download faster, especially if you have a large account, you may have a lot of products and services to navigate. Going over to the product list, you'll notice each program has a downloads link. Clicking here will pop up a new window where you can select the version, platform, and language. All administrators can download from this page as well as any users that have been assigned permission to download. We will be looking at the admin tools later to help make sure your users have the access that they need. This window is also where you can select which download method you prefer. Mac users will currently only have access to the browser download, which utilizes the built-in download capabilities of your web browser. Windows users will default to the Install Now method, which decompresses and installs software as it downloads, then activates your software automatically. This process even detects which platform is in use and installs the appropriate version. Please note that the Install Now process must be completed in one sitting and cannot be downloaded to install at a later time. Selecting your specific platform will reveal the Download Now option, which installs and launches the Autodesk Download Manager, called the DLM. This gives you more control than a conventional browser-based download. The DLM reduces the time it takes to get applications up and running, by decompressing product files during the download. Doing this eliminates the separate file extraction process that's usually required after the download completes and before running the product installer. Finally, after selecting your platform, you will notice a More Options link, which includes your browser download option. This is the same method available for Mac users, utilizing your browser's built-in download capabilities. Browser download files are typically larger when compared to other methods, and larger downloads may be broken into multiple parts, no larger than 2 gigabytes each. Multiple downloads may start at once, so please make sure your pop-up blocker is disabled and not preventing these downloads from initializing. You must wait for all files to be completely downloaded before beginning decompression and installation. Moving on to accessing those cloud services that might come with your subscription. We're going to head back to the Products and Services page, and then filter by Services. Your cloud services are clearly labeled as being included as part of your subscription benefits. Instead of that download link, we now have an Access Now link to get us to the cloud service. A new window will then pop up, directing you to that particular service. Just to clarify, an administrator would have to assign a user access to this cloud service, otherwise it would not appear in their Products and Services page when they sign in. So that was our products and services. Now let's take a look at product updates. Administrators and users who have permission can come here to access any product updates, enhancements, and extensions available for your 2016 products and any new releases that may come out. When I select a product update, I'm going to click one of those handy drawers. It expands and you can choose to ignore or download the update. We've also recently replaced our application manager with the Autodesk desktop app, which contains help content, will alert you to new updates and any new releases for your products, and allows you to install your product with one click right from your desktop. We are currently enhancing it so you'll have easy access to learning content, downloads, and other useful information related to your product. The desktop app is for Windows only, and you can learn more about it by going to the Autodesk Knowledge Network and searching About Autodesk Desktop App. Product updates and enhancements for 2016 and earlier versions of software will still be available, but you will access them through this quick link on the left, which would be our product enhancements. Over time, as this content gets older and less relevant, it will eventually go away as they might get built into the releases. The product updates page will then become the one place to get all product updates enhancements, and extensions for all your Autodesk software. On the Products and Services page, you might notice an additional button to download products. Although anyone can see it, this is really meant for you to have access to software that may be from an expired maintenance plan or on any previous versions of the software no longer attached to an agreement. 
If you have a perpetual license, you will still have access to your previous licenses, but they will no longer appear on the main products and services page. So for viewing those product and service details, we took a look at those drawers earlier, which are a great feature of Autodesk Account. No matter where you are in Autodesk Account, you can get more information about the product, download previous versions, access serial numbers and contract details, and product help just by clicking those arrows to expand the drawers. Users will have access to these drawers as well, but will not see all the same information that the administrators can. Here is where some of that personalized experience comes in. This is an expanded view of what an administrator for a maintenance plan would see. Notice that we can see information on when the current agreement expires, as well as each of our current serial numbers. When we take a look at the user view, we can see that the serial number cannot be viewed. Since perpetual licenses only require the serial number and key to unlock access to each new release, the contract manager or software coordinator would supply this information to the users for the version they wish their users to have access to. Because subscription licenses can be managed by contract managers or software coordinators, the serial numbers are visible to the end user, but will only grant access to the software if they are currently assigned. Again, this is where we would get a more personalized feel for the new Autodesk account because you're seeing what's specifically applicable to you based on your role. These same drawers come in handy for cloud service details. Notice that we spent quite a bit of time on this same products and services page because there's really a lot you can do here from this main area. If I click on the services and expand the drawer for Green Building Studio, there are some additional notes here for further product information. One of the pieces of feedback we've received is that a lot of people still have questions about cloud services, what they are, how to use them, and how to access them. So we created an additional area to describe those services. This section lets you know you have this service available because it is included with your subscription. There's a description of the service to let you know how it might interact with your existing software or enhance it, and then some additional links for more product information and help. It's important to remember that cloud services would not show up for users unless an administrator has assigned them as a named user. Once they are assigned, they would see this service in their account. Now let's take a look at some of the ways your Autodesk account conforms to your specific roles. The image displayed is for an administrator of a subscription to AutoCAD LT. Clicking the More Actions link will allow you to manage serial numbers, user access, or edit your payment details. When the administrator clicks the Downloads link, notice the window we reviewed earlier also provides access to serial numbers, user access, which we will cover in more detail shortly, and updates and add-ons. If we look at the same section for an end user, you'll notice that the options have changed. The More Actions link has been removed altogether, and clicking the Downloads will only show the downloads, serial number, and updates and add-ons that have been assigned by the administrator. The User Access tab has been removed, as this is a function only for the administrators. If we switch to the same section for a different type of product, a network license with a maintenance plan, for example, the menu will look different. Now we see options for getting a previous version, a home use license, getting a physical copy of the software, and seeing payment details. Again, we see this personalization that shows you what you were designed to have access to. Moving on, one of the best benefits of a subscription is that it features flexible licensing rights, so users can have the right tools at the right time, whatever your location. Let's start with requesting your previous version. We are still on the Products and Services page under the Products tab. Having access to previous versions of software means you can be better prepared to work with customers who may not be using the latest Autodesk technology. In the Autodesk account, from the More Actions on the Products and Services page, you can click Get Previous Versions. Notice that you can also open a Products drawer and access the same options by selecting Get Serial Numbers. Either option will take you to a pop-up window, guiding you to the next steps based on your license type. 
If I have a standalone license on maintenance plan, you'll be directed to send a request to customer service to create that previous version. Once submitted, an agent will process the request manually and email you once the previous version license is available. Notice that for a multi-user license on subscription, it would be included with the network license file you receive and no further action is required. Subscription licenses do not require a separate request and can be accessed directly from within Autodesk account by clicking Get Serial Number. This will load for a moment before displaying your previous version credentials. It is a very similar process for requesting home use licenses. Being able to use the same license at the office and on a home computer provides that extra flexibility you might need. In Autodesk account, admins can click on More Actions, select Get Home Use License, and then a new window will pop up. From this window, you will see what we need to do next. For single user licenses, simply use your existing serial number. For network licenses, this will direct you to send out another request so that you can work offline if you're out in the field or working from home. Now let's talk about new functionality within Autodesk account. Since the 26th of February, customers who own multi-user licenses are able to generate license files from their Autodesk account portal. Please note that only the contract manager and software coordinator have this functionality. You can access this tool by clicking the quick link or expanding the drawer for your program and selecting Generate Network License File. Either option will take you to the Tools page shown in the next slide. Well, how does it work? First, you will need to collect your server host name and physical address. As before, you can choose between three different server models, a single server, redundant server where you will need to provide the information for all three servers, and distributed server, where you will need to indicate the number of servers, their host name, physical address, and the number of seats on each server. In this example, we chose the single server model. If you wish to change the server model, you can still do so from this screen. Once you're ready, click the plus button to start adding your software to the license file. This will launch a list of available products. You can choose Select All or individually check off the products you wish to add. When finished, click the Add Selected button to proceed. When you're ready to generate the license file, click the Get License File button at the bottom of the page. License information is then displayed according to the servers and products you've specified. Click the Copy to Clipboard button to copy this information to be pasted into a license file. Click Save As to save the license file to a specified location. Or click Send and Close to send the license file to the email address associated with your Autodesk account, as well as any additional addresses you'd like to input. You'll find more detailed information on our Autodesk Knowledge Network by searching with the keywords Generating a License File in Autodesk Account. Next up is support. Subscriptions and maintenance plans include technical support to keep you productive in case you run into any issues with your software. If you're interested in additional support options to augment your existing support level, feel free to contact one of our authorized resellers. They can assist you with upping your support to advanced support or enterprise priority level support. We begin first with accessing our self-help options. From the top navigation, click on support. There are a number of options to access support for all customers, but for self-help, click Browse Support and Learning. That will bring up a page directing us to the Autodesk Knowledge Network where you will find our extensive library of tutorials, videos, and articles, including access to monitored forums where you can get community support. Alright, so what if we need to submit a support case? You would expand the support menu again and click on Contact Us. The support content available in the Contact Us page is highly organized to serve up top solutions so you can gain access to answers faster. You might be able to find the information you need in an article that could resolve the issue right away. This page is also personalized when you've logged in so it delivers details based on the support level you have for your subscription or license. 
Contact Us is still a work in progress and will continue to be improved upon and will deliver more features in the future. To view past and present cases or create a new support ticket, we would pull that support menu down and click on View My Support Cases. Based on your support level, you may see a phone number if you have advanced or enterprise priority support, options to create a technical support case, and so on. The Case Center is also where you can set permissions for resellers to view your Autodesk support cases, and that's right underneath where phone support information will be listed on the right-hand side. You can also select View Cases at the top of your screen to access your current and historic cases. You can also search your case history by account, date created, keyword, or the case ID, which is provided in the confirmation email you receive after submitting a support request. To view case details, including chat transcripts, previously shared files, and email correspondence, click the corresponding case ID link. Now we're going to explore managing users, how to add them, and assigning benefits so that your users can access your products and services. The following features can only be accessed by contract managers or software coordinators. This area of the Autodesk account would be the control area for adding access and modifying permissions for support. As a contract manager or software coordinator, you can add users by going to the Users icon, then click on Add, and then fill out the fields for the name and email address in the window that pops up. You can add a single user this way, or if you have many users, you can use the Bulk Add option to add users with 50 at a time. Since users will not be able to create their own accounts to be linked to a subscription, this is an important function to remember. Once you click Save, those users will receive an email noting their access has changed and they will be prompted to log in to Autodesk accounts. Until they do, there will be a little gray circle next to their name noting a pending status. Once they've logged into their account, you'll see the status change over to a green check mark. To edit the permissions for existing users, you can use search and filter to find a user, for example if you want to locate everyone who has permission for specific products or services. Once you have found your user, you can click on the drawer and see what benefits the user currently has and what contracts they're attached to. You can then click Edit Access to make any needed changes. A new window will pop up, and here is where you can assign or unassign, check or uncheck product downloads, enhancements, web support, and cloud services. Don't forget, end users will not be able to view any product or service unless they are assigned this way. If you have a lot of users, you'll definitely want to take advantage of the bulk edit option. Once you've added your users, check off the users you wish to edit. From the action menu up top, select Edit Access. A new window will then pop up, and here's where you can assign or remove benefits. Any changes made will affect all the users selected, regardless of which user comes up first. To show a little more detail, we can expand the drawers next to each product and service. Depending on your product, there may be additional services to assign to your user, including rendering, cloud services, and storage. If any of your users report inability to access a particular service, you will want to make sure you've checked this area to ensure they are assigned to that service first. There are a few scenarios you may encounter in this part of your Autodesk account in which you will want to contact our customer care team for assistance. One scenario is that you may go to your Manage Users page, but the page is blank. If you are unable to add yourself as a user, please open a case or chat with our customer care team to take a look at your account. Another scenario that may occur would be when you attempt to add a user or edit a user's permissions, a blank page appears with a spinning wheel. After several minutes, the wheel remains and you are unable to edit or save any changes. Again, you will want to reach out to our customer care team through the support methods we discussed in the previous section to assist with any possible account sync issues. Next up, let's say you are the contract manager and you need some help providing access and managing licenses. One of the things you can do is assign a software coordinator to help take care of a group of users. 
This person would receive notifications about any product releases, and they can also add users, request previous versions, and home use licenses. When you're signed in as the contract manager, under the Quick Links area to the left, you would want to click on Manage Software Coordinators. A new window will pop up, and you can add, edit, or remove Software Coordinator. As a side note, you can only have one software coordinator per serial number. You can use the Edit or Remove buttons to change information for existing software coordinators. To change the software coordinator, click the Products tab to access settings for assigning an administrator to a product or group of products. First, check off the products you wish to assign to a software coordinator and click the Assign button. Next to the name of the current software coordinator is a selection button. Clicking this will launch the Assign Software Coordinator pop-up window. Select from the list of existing software coordinators and click the Assign button to confirm your choice. If you are adding a new software coordinator, click the Add button to enter in their information. Once this is entered, the user will be included in the selection window and can be assigned as needed. Once you've made your selection, you will have a final chance to review before applying your changes. Once confirmed, click the Apply to All button to save your modification. To change your contract manager, you would simply submit a case through your support hub shown earlier. From the Create Case tab, select the My Subscription, and then you'll be taken to a category list where you can choose I want to change the contract manager. Please have the new contract manager's first name, last name, and email address to complete this request and click Submit. This will create a ticket with our customer service team and an agent will reply with a confirmation of the change. Please note that the contract manager cannot be changed for subscriptions that automatically renew. For example, if you own a monthly single user license and need to change the contract manager, you will need to cancel your automatic renewal, allow the license to expire, and repurchase the software with the correct contract manager. Now that we've added a software coordinator, if you have advanced or enterprise priority support, you or your software coordinator can add or manage named callers by going to Quick Links again, then selecting Manage Phone Support Users. When the new window pops up, you can edit, add, or remove users who you'd like to add the benefit of phone support to. Once a user is assigned advanced support, they can select View My Support Cases. This will load the same support hub shown earlier, and any user who has been assigned advanced support will find an extra section including your support phone numbers and your identifying Express Service ID, which you will need to enter to reach a support specialist. Now, on to managing devices. Working our way down that left navigation pane, Clicking on the icon with the computers will give you information about the machines and users that have logged on and accessed this contract. This information is obtained by the Autodesk desktop app mentioned earlier, which will indicate the computer's name, a description that you can edit, the active computer profile, time of last update, and whether the user's software is current or out of date and lacking a recent patch or update. You can also filter by devices, last user, or status to quickly locate specific users, gauge device activity, and identify which users may be in need of updates. The cog wheel to the right will trigger a pop-up where you can manage how updates are sent through the Autodesk desktop app. Here you can choose whether all devices receive automatic updates, no devices receive automatic updates, or create a custom list by adding to the only selected list. One key point when you're in the Managing Devices window is that you will have to accept an agreement because of, the, because of the personally identifiable information that's revealed here. You can choose to accept this or close out this page and return to the previous one. While we're still under the administrator role, we'll go over how contract managers and software coordinators can view contract details and where you can check renewal information. The final icon from the navigation panel is for billings and orders, and would be the destination for reviewing current agreements. You would click on this to see a master list of all the contracts. In the visual for this slide, I just have the one. 
You can click on a contract to see more details, like contract number, start and expiration dates, or even purchase cloud credits. As this would be the top of the screen, when you scroll down, you can see the rest of the product details for that contract. This is also where you can see if a maintenance plan is up for renewal and how to contact your reseller to renew. Finally, we'll talk a little bit about the reporting functions. Contract managers, software coordinators, and users have access to reporting to help measure the availability of cloud credits. Under that products and services bar under the management page, there's a reporting icon. Users can see the availability of their individual cloud credits. Administrators can see their own individual cloud credits plus the usage of shared cloud credits. Again, users can see their own individual cloud credits, but cannot see the overall shared cloud credits for those contracts, as these would have been purchased by the company to be shared by all users. Now, one cool feature of Autodesk Account I want to point out is the In Context Help, which is located in that little eye icon. Peppered throughout Autodesk Account are these little eye buttons for more information. If hovered over, you will learn more about that item. Expanding further on managing cloud credits, admins can also keep track of how many cloud credits each user has consumed. By clicking on the Users tab, which is only available for administrators, you can compare usage rates for each user and verify how many cloud credits remain available. If you wish to receive a report on all your company licenses, you can contact registration and activation directly by chat or by email. You can either go to knowledge.autodesk.com slash contact us, select license management, and then license report, or you can create a support ticket in your account by selecting registration and activation. Our goal today was to get you started and more familiar with Autodesk accounts. There are other features that you can explore further on your own, like trials, the network license manager under quick links, and there's even a place to give us feedback. We will continue to improve Autodesk accounts, so providing your feedback will help shape the future of our customer experience. If there are any questions that we haven't been able to answer on the chat panel, we can take a little time to try and answer some of those now. You can also provide feedback in the link at the bottom as well. Any questions we aren't able to answer at this time, we can follow up with you directly. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on a tour of Autodesk accounts. We'll be compiling any questions from the chat window, so we'll leave this window open for a few moments. Thank you again, everybody, for attending.